the continuity and causality of material motion, thus expressed as time. In four-dimensional space, the sequence of history and the events which compose it, thus are expressed as word lines. This simple and straightforward structure concealed the wild of the world and the inevitability that the gods decree for those who exploit. Anyone who wishes to defy this will shall meet the same fate as human who wish to live beyond the bounds of the atmosphere. Namely, certain annihilation. Yet this does not imply a hopeless ending. Perhaps the solution to transcend all dimensions we can perceive exists within ourselves. So, Game or Mitero, my mo, Najida, whatever no Kado mechanism in I Hanshi, so the Dokoroka, Kotona, Yojigen Zakoni, Mioku, Sokono, Omae, Ovaterno, Oremo, my to do yoni, Erabashi, Mono, no Hitori, no Dokarana, Ima, Kono, Shunkankara, Omae, Tore, no Ume, what can they need tots to not Tanoda? Menskinaki, Erabashi, Mono, Koredake, or Boy, the Okuna, Wagon. ライン。今日の。もう一つの世界線。いや。世界線を超えし狂気のマッドサイエンティストだ。俺たちの次なる目的地は。ゆらら食らうのだ。けっ。今の私たちって。<笑> 一体どういう状態にあるのかしら世界線や時間が変動しただけじゃないそれどころか身の回りは現実ですらねこの状況すごく興味深いわねこの作戦モードへの切り替え完了ナイスが表示にジューシーカラー揚げナンバーワンを持
1320 marker C time. Inside the Oasis operating room. I awakened from a dream. Was I sleeping just now? Indeed, a very soundly too, Professor. Would you like some coffee to pack you up? Thank you, Persicaria. We'll take it a sweet, little sweet. Uh, though not as sweet as you usual. Uh, I guess Persicaria sweet is just too sweet for you, Professor. Yeah, still. Could have woken me up since I dust off in the afternoon at all. I show that afternoon naps are good for your health, you know? Relax, nothing urgent happened that requires your attention during this time. Uh, Alright then, and thanks for the coffee. I take a sip of it, and sweet taste does much to clear my head up. Professor, why don't you leave the rest today's work to me? You should head back early and get some rest. <laughs> Do I look that tired? Ah, your fatigue is reflecting in your work, Professor. Look at the documents you are working on now. <laughs> you typed the O in the Oasis as an zero. Uh, my, you're right. Still, why are you so sure that this wasn't an error by the agent working on it before me? <laughs> well, agents righteously follow programming for textual entry and output. Making mistakes like this is the exclusive privilege of human beings. <laughs> and you are the only human in the asset, Professor. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, yeah, you don't want to make the coffee too sweet because having Persicala near you is literally makes everything much more sweeter. Well, you got me there. Looks like I really do need to get some rest. Huh? Persicala, is it me or does this all feel familiar? Familiar? Why do you ask? Oh no. <gasps> oh my god. Are we right now in the time loop? Oh, we have the sound of. Oh my god, we just got transported into time loop. I can't. Oh, this is so chills. Oh. For some reason, I have got a hazy impression in my mind that we had this conversation before. Uh, so something like deja vu? Oh, we already had a time loop in chapter 3, man. Yeah. Well, according to modern science, the phenomenon of deja vu is a perfectly normal biological phenomenon. The characteristics of certain objects simulated the terrible context, which creates a subjective viewing experience and feeling of Familiarity. Those have no sense of deja vu, so we will leave them aside. But not often that you ask for additional sugar in your coffee. My guess is that nothing like today could have happened before. I guess I am really too worried. Then you should replenish your glucose level. This sounds like the perfect time for you to try the brood that I have been... Oh? The ground shudders beneath our feet as a sudden tremor strikes us. Basica sort is out in an instant and she takes a fighting stance. Basica and I exchange glances as our heart filled with uneasiest. It is as explosion. An earthquake? 
Antonina, how are things on your end? Professor, an unknown building suddenly appear in the one of the other's empty slots. Their tembro just now was cursed by that building. The building appeared out of thin air? I don't quite understand. Was anyone hurt? Nobody was hurt. I know it sounds crazy, but I have already checked their security footage and it really did appear out of nowhere. Just like teleportation. It bypassed all the Oasis defense and early warning systems, including the sandbox barrier. That's strange. But the building was a threat? I've already performed long range scans. It does not seem to possess a threat for now. The building's operance count is pretty full low and it's not protected by a firewall. It's pretty much an open book to me. Well, if our network security specialist says so, then it should be safe. For the time being, at least. Persikaila looked my way and then shattered the, her sword. Still, we ought to send someone down to uh, inspect the scene just in case. Antonina, can you think back and recall if there were any signs which preceded the arrival of the building? You think I would miss any signs like that? Ah? Uh, ah? Uh, ah? Uh, how could this be? Antonida, report! I will send backup! Override! No, there's no need. Ah! Uh, my PC! It took so long to get this old computer up and running and it died again! Huh? Uh, I spent all my vacation days on. Putting it together. Uh, kind of understand how do you feel? That said, the PC was entering strange electric arcs after I started it up. Don't know if that counts as a sign. Hopefully I can fix it afterwards. It was emitting electrical arcs? Antonida, wait at the electric store for me and keep scanning the building. <laughs> Professor, a new transmission has come in. This is Krak. I have just arrived on the scene. How oh, I think though. Ah, pretty words. It's worse than I expected. In fact, it's beyond my control. Just to confirm, does this incident have anything to do with the Entropic Invasion? Uh, no, I don't think it's related to those viruses. In a sense, the entropics might actually be easier to handle than that's what's going on now. Audience-wise, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you live from the scene. Why did my mysterious building appear? What is the truth behind this incident? Come, follow our camera lenses as we find it out. Uh, is, is it Kuro? Don't be stingy, dear viewers. Keep sending more donations. If I get more than 100k hits, I will lead you all into this haunted house. Oi, oi. We uh, haven't cleared this place of fire hazards yet. If you budge in, I will let you... Feel the spray of my water gun. This, this is probably Chelsea. I would like to investigate the clues of the scene before they are destroyed. Could you make way, please? Is this, is this stupid? Professor, can I go once I verify that this place is safe? You have done a good job, Croc. Have the people on the scene stay alert. We are heading over right now so okay <laughs> everyone there's so many dolls in uh, in uh in oasis roger 
Uh, why are there so many people here? Does everyone really not have anything better to do? If I would know and it has just a clappy old building, I would have uh, have come here. No, I should have stayed at home to put models together. <laughs> In a plaza on the Austric of the Asses. Oh, that that's a building. Oh yeah, this is this is Otavus uh Rintaro's uh uh apartment lab building, right? I didn't quite uh, it was so long ago last time I watched Stone Gate, Steingate. But even the old um uh, computer shop here got transported to it. The building is made of red bricks, a very rare material these days. It's roughly four stories tall. It looks old and run down and very out of place compared to the high tech sky scrapers in the Oasis. There seem to be a storefront in the first floor, which are frightening him out of all TVs within as though. It's a graveyard of old household electronics. Professor, the non combatant agents around the building have been evacuated. The security procedures are proceeding steadily. Well done, Persicalia. What have you learned about this building? We are only investigating the first floor so far. There are no agents inside. What we do know is that this building structure is completely different from those in the Oasis. Also, as Adonida said, it contains very few operands to begin with. Not likely to pose a threat to us. The storefront on first floor has a name palette that reads Brown Tube Workshop. The interior is Built with large amount of unknown electronic devices. They appear to be a display unit for some sort. Perhaps Antonina would know more about those specializations and uses. Uh, such old monitors. I have only ever seen things like them in the archives. Uh, let's go, Persicalia. We'll head up upstairs and take a look. Oh, the plaquette on the doorway says it's called the Future Gadgets Laboratory. But can you really consider this a lab? <laughs> I'm not surprised what Persicale adopts. After all, it looks more like a home than a lab. The sofa, the table, the fridge. This place is fully equipped with all the basic wrappings needed for a comfortable life. However, they all bear varying degree of wear, making them look like antiques recovered from a flea market. There's a big pile of cardboards, delivered boxes in a corner of the room, not yet collapsed, containing many pieces of Unidentified junk. Persicalia, would you come here and do me a favor? Huh? Persicalia? I look back and see Persicalia staring at the plushy toy on the sofa. Persicalia, do you like that plush? Uh, yes, I mean, no. I just thought it was kind of uncommon. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, it uh, doesn't hurt that <laughs> that's it's cute. Well, it came from the beginning of the century. So it makes sense that you would not have seen anything like this before. Oh, huh? is it from the beginning of century? How did you know that, Professor? True. Professor is also not that uh, old. Well, I checked the mailbox on the first floor before we hit it upstairs. 
that inside a post market to the year 2010. The calendar I saw before we came in here confirmed my hypothesis. Also, I know where this building came from. I hunt the letter I'm holding to Persicaria. Aki, Akihabara? Is that a place in Japan? Yep, although it doesn't exist in our time, at the start of the century it was a place with many stores selling luxury goods and electronic products, and it ended up becoming a major center of anime culture. Akibahara had games, animes, and cosplay. <laughs> A plenty. It would have been the undisputable holy land for otakus in the uh, 2010s. Ah, I didn't know you would know so much about uh, such a things, professor. Uh, caught, caught in four, in four K. Am I hear that from someone else <laughs> too? Uh, basically, I go scan the room and send underneath the results. Let's see if we can find anything. Understood. Ugh. A voice suddenly crumbled from behind the curtain. Pescari got sweetly, drawing her blade and stand in front of, of me. Stay <laughs> back, Professor! Oh. Oh, it's a. 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 She parted the curtain with the tip of her swords and see a man in a white coat lying on the ground, seemingly unconscious. Is he an agent? No, it's not quite right. I'm not picking up life uh, signs. Perhaps he has lost consciousness due to a shock with his neural cloud. Pesicalia, could you read his signature? I have a hunch that I would like to verify. Will do. Oh, yeah, this is another human. They're actually all humans, right? Pesicalia places her hand on the unconscious man's forehead. I can't read his signature. There's a look of shock in Pesicalia's face. It's not a stru crowd structure. Rather than an agent, it's more like... Pesicalia glances at me as she says this. Yeah, he's not an agent. He is a human. And here we are in Rotakus Rin Okabarin Tarus uh, room. We have our bananas while well, they're still here. The plushy toy that Percy kind of find cute. By the way, I have to mute the music because of uh, YouTube does not like this. But right now you can uh, technically listen to the song of uh, the main team of Neuro uh, of Steingate. And there's even a little, that little time machine here. Dr. Paper. Oh, it's not Dr. Paper, it's Dr. Popa. The time machine itself. And yeah, Otaku Rintaro. Okabe Rintaro himself. Can we talk to anyone? Like we cannot. Yeah, let's just go with the next chapter. Stage 1. The proof of the space's decoherence. This was the universe is not hollow expanses. The traces you leave behind are real. I look at the man lying on the ground. He looks to be around 20 or so and wears a white coat. Both his clothing and hairstyle make him as being out of the place in Magrasi. Inspection completed. How was it? Was there any useful information? He has no combat modules and his neural cloud show no signs of entropy virus infection. 
So we don't need to worry about him posing a threat for the time being. From the condition of his neural cloud, he should be regaining consciousness soon. Any further question will have to wait until he wakes up. For that, let's examine his room. Perhaps we might learn something. Let's check the doorway and see if we missed anything. Mm, investigate the doorway. The calendar is from the year 2010. It seems both the date and the year are different. Judging by the date of it, this building ought to be from the August 2010, right? Keep investigating. If how? The display shows a strange animal with a human face. It seems to be called Alpacaman. If you nauseate it, as it stares at you, is this what they call Usukawaii? Uh, there seems to be a gun like object near the TV. It has big particle gun written on it. For some reason, it feels like it came from a metal suit anime. Keep investigating. Uh, investigating the store. There are many pizza boxes nearby. You are pretty sure that more than one person eat here. The stove also looked like it's being used. In fact, there's a half-cooked dish in the wok. However, who would be so demand as to fill the apple pie with natto beef? I think we investigated everything. Next is the living room. Time to put the things you learn in Dupin's detective course to use. Investigate the tea table. The table is covered with assorted snacks and drink. A brown beverage is still emanating cool vapor. Looks like someone just took it out of fridge. There are six cups on the table. Looks like they were having a party here just now, right now. Investigate the sofa. Basically keeps the... <laughs> stealing glance at the plushy toy. Caution on the sofa. You should probably get Chansey to make her one afterwards. So cute. Uh, whiteboard. The whiteboard is covered in various theories and formulas covering such things as neutron stars, black holes, and the speed of light. Professor, could this be? Huh, 11 disproved theories of time travel. Let's nod this down for now. Do you think it's related to the incident? Huh, call it a hunch. By the way, yeah. The... The... Professor, the timeline from where Professor is far more advanced. I, I wonder how advanced will be Technic be in like in 20, 40 years. I think it will still be alive, right? Oh, kind of scary if I think about it. The last area you had to investigate is the space behind the curtains. The mess here reminds you of Crocs and Antonidas' wax rooms. You find a stash device that look like a claymo mine. The label on the side reads Future Gadgets Number no. 4, Mold Snake. After a few the investigation, you discover that it is merely an instant humidifier that can sweep large quantities of vapor. Investigating the table, the table has many antique computers on it. Perhaps it might be good news for lover of such things like Antonida. However, their models indicate that they might be even older than Antonida's antique computers. Investigate under the table. There's a strange microwave on the table. It's strange because it has a lot of wiggly wires on top. and. Even the door has been removed. 
Professor, is that microwave really that interesting? This really is a future gadget's lab, like it says on the doorway. Then perhaps this microwave with a phone we are wired to it is one such future gadget. Oh, you, you, do, you, do, you know, Professor, you know. Investigate the weird machine that's emanating smoke. The smoking machine is very obvious, being only a small distance away from the unconscious man. Judging by its position, perhaps it's the culprit behind his lost consciousness. It looks like a model satellite, and its name is Future Gadgets number 99. On wave and take computer, future gadgets, oh, all weird things. Basically, could you scan this machine that's labeled future gadget number 99? I point to the machine that's still sweeping smoke. Oh, unfortunately, I cannot identify this object. However, I am detecting strange operands flows from it. I have already sent the scan results to Antonida, but further research will have to wait until she sees the object in the flash. Let's leave things as they are for now. They, my instinct tells me that this might be one of the reasons of this incident. <laughs> Professor with his not human-like instincts. The future gadget labs is full of mysteries. For instance, all the talk about time machines and where everyone else is here went. Indeed, for the number of cups, there were signs of many people here not long ago. But we have only found one person so far. I, th I think maybe they are also spawned like in Margaracy, like in everywhere here too. But we don't, we, don't, we don't get any reports from other adults. Beep, 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 beep. This is Prescaria. Uh, got it. Professor, we just received a message from a field team. They say they are found an irregular agent who might be human. They might have something to do with this incident. Okay, so, so now we are receiving some some clues about other members. Just in time, send that person away there. All right. Uh. The man on the ground groans and grimaces. He seems to be in pain. Basically, steps in front of me and plays a hand on his throat. This is already the third time that Persicalia protects us. Man, Persicalia is a little bit overprotective. This is so cute still. Professor, please step back. It looks like he's about to wake up. It's not that bad just to wake up. Uh, anyway, we claim... Rintaro Kaba. Behold the insane mad scientist. Yoka Kiyoma. Hailing from another world, he's stepped up now. And here he is, the legend, the man, Otaka Kinta, uh, Rintaro Otkabe. I mean, Hiroki Kiyoma. Oh, it's so nice. And we get him for free, he's like, supporter right now. And here we are. Oh, wait, no, we... Oh, we have his chibi model. Look, both professors standing each to each other. What do you have to say? Can we talk to Persica? No. Can we leave? Okay. Let's talk to the professor. I 
I awake amidst the darkness. This sudden ch change in text? A wave of dizziness, notion and suffocation assaults me. As though the heavens themselves were about to collapse. And then I feel like I'm being picked. Picked all over by countless needles. Like being burned up by a fire. Just then someone's hand gently struck my face. The gesture fills me with relief. And my agony recedes. However, that is when I hear her crying. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The voice says it over and over again, full of panic. I try to get up and consult her, but I cannot move. I cannot even open my eyes. Don't worry, everything will be alright. Goodbye. And as she says that, I feel her slowly drawing away. Don't go. I want to stop her, but I can't speak. Then a cool liquid inflocks me, slowly pulling me away. I struggle desperately, trying my hardest to scream. But then my body, or my mind, to be precise, suddenly launches into the boundless darkness. There's no way back. Oh. Oh. I suddenly sit up, my scream echoing throughout the room. My clothes are drenched in cloth sweat. I wipe the moisture from my forehead as the familiar scenery of the laboratory came into view. Ah. So it was all just a dream. By the way, we have like a different style right now, and I remember that Steingate is also a visual, like, uh, yeah, visual novel game, right? Um, I think this is a style. I, don't, I didn't play the Steingate game, but it looks, it, it probably is like the same style. Wait, could it be that the organization has mastered the art of psychological warfare? No, oh, despicable. To think they would try to weaken my will with such methods. Ah, uh, my head hurts. Mayuri, can I get some water? Here. Yeah. Oh my god, is this a professor's... It feels so weird. Oh my god, it feels so weird. We are like now in different perspective. We are not anymore in Professor's perspective. This is not NeuroCloud anymore. This is something else. <laughs> That's so cool. Ah, uh, thanks. Hey, wait. I spring up from the ground and assume a defensive stance against the unfamiliar pair before me. Who, who are you? What are you doing here? Of the two people in front of me, one is a pink-haired cat girl <laughs> with a stern face and one hand on its impractically ornamented sword. She looks like she might take a swing at me at any time. The other had black hair and a neutral expression. Judging by the lab clothes they are wearing, they ought to be some kind of scientists. I can <laughs> Is this some sort of uh, kind of cosplay event? I cannot pass on this. <laughs> this professor. Well, we're looking kind of big. Why don't you calm down a little? The black haired one is the first to speak. The cloth they are wearing seems kind of familiar. Allow me to introduce myself. 
I am professor. Besides me is Persicalia, my assistant. Oh, it, ha it has even assist this, this stone gate, uh, stone gate stuff. Ah, uh, professor, are you from the organization? Professor from the organization. <laughs> what organization? Well, I, I think if you played the Steingate visual novel, you kind of uh, can recognize some stuff. I, 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 unfortunately, I don't. It's me. We have got an emergency. People from the organization have infiltrated the lab. I press my cell phone to my ear and cover my mouth to show that I'm whispering. Yes. Yes, I'm prepared for this. The phone is silent. It seems they're thinking of a way to deal with this. What? Carry out operation? We da? I don't know what this means. It could destroy the world, if not handled properly. Destroy the world? <laughs> Professor, he isn't actually taking to anyone, he's just pretending. The professor from the organization shakes their head and silently holds back the cat girl. Huh. They must have been frightened by what I said. My conversational partner does not respond, probably in approval of my action. It is a rational decision. Such is the emergency that faces us now. I am captured by the organization here. The risk we face will be no different than the end of the world. Is this the choice of Stein's gate? L. Sai. Congro. After returning the phone to my pocket, I put out the sternest expression I could master and face the opposition. <laughs> Listen up, you lackeys of the organization. Operation Wida will begin soon from now on. This is a level 17 classified mission. If you understand, then don't try to stop me. Huh. If the operation works out, then let us embrace each other in the near future. Saying so, I approach the door without changing my expression. The cat girl seems wary of the doorway but the organization professor remains still. Since the situation is unclear at the moment, it's best that I mount a tactical retreat. Now all I need to do is to grab the doorknob. But before I can, someone pushes the door open up. Let me guess. Da -da oh no. Akabe? Ah, oh, it's my assistant. Where did you run off for, too? No, wait, more importantly, we are in great danger. Uh, did someone find out what you were doing? Oh, this is... This is uh... Irisu? How do that Okabe calls her all the time? Uh, Christina, right? Da, da, da. Also, science, when did I become your assistant? And now it's not time for this. We need to get out of this lab as fast as possible. Ah, given how you are acting, it's probably not a big deal. I can't believe I was actually worried if you were alright after coming to this world. Huh? What? What did you say? We have been sent 
to another world? Yep, you got isekai Ah, that's right. We're not in Akihibara anymore. <laughs> what? What's going on? Oh, Christina. No. Zombie girl. Have you spent too long on Ed Channel? Or have you lost your mind from all the experiments you have been doing? Or could we possibly have been sent to... As I say it, I look out of the window. What? What the hell is going on? The familiar scenery is gone, replaced by towering, futuristic looking skyscrapes. I taught you, right? We got sent to another world. I. I, I see. Uh, the outside must be uh, some kind of hologram, right? This is a hidden camera gag show. I bet Daru and Ferris are hidden somewhere trying to film my scared face. I'm out now. I have long since seen through your evil blood. However, nobody responds. Kuriso plants her hands on her hips and continues looking at me silently. Meanwhile, the professor and the cat girl seem to be... At a loss of words. I like how she uh, he keeps in his mind calling her cat girl. <laughs> oh, Christina? There's something I must confess. When you went out to buy ingredients, I indulged my scientific curiosity and filled myself before sampling the food you made. What did you even have to steal yourself for? My cooking isn't that bad. Huh? You mean you eat my cooking? You did, Okawa? Huh. Mm hmm. The taste was most explosive. Like venom. From the Sons of Neil, Month of the War, White. More importantly, I didn't expect it to have hallucination properties, which causes me to see such. <laughs> then, shall I bore a hole in your skull and disinfect your brain with alcohol then? You will be able to see those hallucinations all your life, no? Uh, sorry. Ah, so this is a data reel known at the Oasis, then. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, who is not from the organization? Okay. Yes, you are not in the real world, but in a digital world on the Magrasi Super Cloud server. The Oasis is just one of the cities in this place. You and your building suddenly appears here, like you have been teleported. No, we were teleported. Like the Philadelphia experiment then. What could have caused this? A wormhole? Some kind of anti-gravity effect? Or could it be... Hey, Christina! Ah, more to the point. We are in a data space, which means our consciousness are not rooted in physical bodies, but in data. So our brains were each scanned, but then uploaded one by one. But the brain contains terabytes of information, terabytes of information. So how? My sense of touch, my breathing, they don't feel any different from before so far. Stina, 
Hey, Christina! What the heck, Okabe? I'm thinking... Don't disturb me. You experimenting, loving girl? There's something more important we have to do? I frantically try to convey my meaning with the look from my eyes. She might be a girl genius who skipped grades to graduate from the America University. Someone who has thesis published in the international magazines, science, and a bona fide diet in the wood genius, but is also immature and often ends up getting sidetracking by things which catch her interest. At times like this, I have to step up. Huh? Ah, sorry about that. We have not introduced ourselves yet. I am Kurisa Makisa, a neuroscientist at the Brain Science Institute of the Victoria Andrea University. That chuny dog over there is Rintaro Kabe. Nice to meet you, Professor of the Oasis. Hey, who is that chuny dog? Rintaro Kabe is just the name I was given at birth. Also, Christina, now that you are a member of the lab, remember to identify yourself as a lab member when including yourself. Introducing yourself. Yes, yes, as Okabe says, I should be a lab member number 004. That should be enough, right? Mm-hmm. As long as you get it. Now then, it's my turn. Now watch closely. This is a true, perfect self-introduction. I flare out my white lab coat and strike the trademark pose of a mad scientist. Greetings, Professor! I am no other than the lab member. Number 001, destroyer of this world's ruling order. The seeker of the chaos. The founder of the lab. The insane mad scientist. Oin! Yuma! <sighs> I'm actually starting to feel second-hand embarrassment here. Yoin Kiyoma? A mad scientist? Indeed. That would be none other than Yod Struli. Hey, wait a minute. What? Uh, I say what are you trying to do, you pink-haired girl? Security? This is Persicale. We have a dangerous person here who needs to be taken its custody. To custody. Uh, wait a minute. It's not what you think. Uh, that's right. Actually, we are carrying out Operation Wida. Operation Wida? Co correct. This operation involves the destinies of all mankind. If you don't hang up, I will send the order to my subordinates and have them detonate hidden explosives to cause havoc. How about that? If you are scared, then end your call right now. <laughs> Rock, bring the heavy weapon over right now. Also have Chelsea and Cyan begin sweeping the Oasis structure. There might be an upcoming wave of explosion that needs to be dealt with. W what? Please wait. That's not our intentions. Please don't take what Akaba says so too serious. All that was just his true ravings. They are just his delusion. They're not actually true. Mo true ravings? Delusions? If he's truly that badly. Afflicted, 
the Oasis can provide him with treatments. The mood in there instantly turns awkward. Uh actually uh, uh I think his case is terminal. There's no curing for him. Hey I see. So uh, this condition's called Chuni is a several disaster. Looks like we need to pay cl even closer attention to it. I will connect the medical department. Uh, there's no need for that, Persicario. Let me handle this. Professor, do you know how to treat this illness? Um, I once knew um, a friend, yes, a friend with these problems. In any case, don't worry about it, Persicario. You should go deal with the issues caused by their appearance. I am certain that Mr. Akabe and Miss Kurisu are alright. So leave this place to me. Alright, but please, take care of yourself. The pink-haired girl, girl seemed to be uh, dubious about all this. But she eventually departs as asked, leaving the professor, Kurisu and myself in the lab. After seeing the professor face palming, it hits me. Now is the time for a mad scientist to strike. Oh, professor of the Oasis, thank you for hiding my true identity from Catgirl's son, who was unaware of the truth. That being the case, you must understand the weighty burden that I must bear. There's no need to hide it any longer. But I already know it all. You too have been battling the organization all this while, haven't you? A comrade of mine? A comrade? Why do you look so crestfallen? Uh, Miss Marcus uh, and uh, Miss Akaba, is it? That's right, Professor. But you can't just call me a uh, Urisu. Hold on, my name is Hoin. Uh, right, right, I get it. I believe that neither of you means us ill, and that you're ordinary people who got caught up in an extraordinary situation. If possible, we in the others would like to provide you with help we can. Don't you tell me about what happened before and after you were brought here? As I look at the future gadgets number 099, I recall what happened earlier before I fell unconscious. <laughs> Science, it's a request of the comrade. Then allow me to tell you about how we came to arrive in your world. Can you hear me? Yes, that's right, you, on the other side of the screen. Now there's no need to doubt your ears. You are not imagining things. I am talking to you. Does he play his role or does is, it, is he actually talking to us? Monka? I can see everything that's happening over there. Even the way you are Speaking on the screen, oh my god. <gasps> Still, you are not showing much of reaction despite hearing such shocking news. I do kind of show the reaction. <laughs> well done. Patience and calmness like that is precisely what I needed. Only I had someone with your qualities among my comrades. That's because despite this being such a crucial moment, those so-called comrades of mine have chosen to ignore me and much 
on pizza by themselves. <sighs> so be it then. I shall leave these dogs to their own deceives. You, on the other hand, have just come in time. This is the moment when I announce my great invention to the world. Once the masses learn of it, the world will be plunged into chaos and its ruling over will be overturned. Ah, that's right. From now on, the world belongs to me. Oin Yama. <laughs> oh, Karin! Oh, Karin! Your pizza going to get cold. Upon hearing this insensitive interjection, I look away from the screen with an annoying look on my face and turn to the black haired girl who is regarding me with big, shiny eyes. Mayuri, how many times have I told you not to call me Okarin? Oh, well, considering that you are lab number number 001 and thus one of our founders, I shall forgive you for your transgression. But now it's not the time for you to take the stage. This is still the opening addressment of the announcement conference. The part where we show our appreciation to friends and family comes later on. But all this lines a hard man. You're stuck talking to yourself in front of the TV screen because nobody paying attention to you. I feel sorry for you, Karin. Also, what all this about an announcement conference? Isn't this just a gathering of friends? Oh, how could you muggles possibly understand my thinking? That's the reason why you are my assistants and I am the mad scientist known all over the world. The long-haired girl pays me and the look of pique on my face now hit. Instead, she picks up the bottle of Dr. P on the table and calmly takes a mouthful of it. Suddenly, a revelation strikes me. No, wait a minute. Could it be that an interwoven style of introductions would leave a deeper impression on people? Oh, assistant? Which approach do you think is better? How can I best show of Hoinskyama splendor? <sighs> I don't think it matters, right? It's not like anyone will care about it. Uh, what? What do you say? Damn it, you Christina. I told you, I'm neither your assistant nor Christina. Oh, say, Ocarian, where's the pizza cutter? The man who is leisuring looking for the pizza cutter might look plain, but his true identity is that of a super hacker, as well as the favorite right arm of myself, Hyoin Kiyama. Uh, look, Daru, can't you see I'm talking to the guy on the other side of the screen? Slam member number 003, can you take care of something trivial like this by yourself? Oh, super hacker, don't lose yourself in your own little world. You should try listening to others sometimes. That was like one thing I didn't want to hear coming from you, man. Also, it's not super haka, it's super haka. No. Oh, hey, that's this boy. Yeah, do not mi be misled. And by the way, I think I think she will be uh, together with Kimi, which I'm very excited for. Luka Uri Shibara. Ashida-san, 
you need something to cut with, I could help. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Yes, I will just use Samidare that Oka, uh, that Kiyoma Sensei gave me. Hold it, hold it, all of you. Upon hearing me yell at them to stop, the slender girl, I mean guy, in front of me trembles, then turns to look at me with moist, lumpid eyes. Lukaku, might you explain why exactly you are carrying Samidare on you right now? Huh? Uh, um, must I? Don't worry, disciple of mine. I will forgive you for anything you do. Um, uh, that's because you scolded me for not carrying it with me in the shrine last time, Kiyoma Sensei. Ah, uh, that was after I saw a certain zombie girl and went to the shrine to get you to exercise her. Why are you calling it zombie girl? Uh, anyway, after that, I... Lucas' face turns red, and he rubs his hands together in an adorable way. But, he is a guy. <laughs> I never played the light novel, like the, the web, not the game, light novel game, right? And... I know this is from anime, but man, it, it, it's like literally intensifying me to play the light novel. Uh, well, I understand now. It seems I was the one who made you do it. You truly are my beloved disciple. Kiyama Sensei, did I do something wrong? No, Lukako, you did nothing wrong. Daru, don't you think there's something wrong with the cutting a pizza with a Japanese katana? As long as it works, right? Oh, Karin, haven't you seen Lupin's the chart? That katana wielding thief does that all the time, doesn't he? Oh, fair is Nyan Nyan. She's also with us. Nyan Nyan? That's definitely wrong, Nyan. Paris? I looked at the pink haired girl, the only one who is going along with me. After exchanging looks with her, she waves to the screen too. Hello! Paris' name is Paris Nyan Nyan. Excellent. You need to introduce yourself like Paris. Take notes, assistant. Paris might appear to be a super popular working girl in a cut art maid cafe, but she's actually working secretly with Kyo and Kiyoma. That's right, 5000 years ago, Paris' ancestors sealed Semida after a long holy war. It finally fell into the hands of the legendary demon king. <laughs> What's all this about? The demon king. This is bad. I can't let uh, Ferris imagination continue to uh, run wild, or else I will sp stuck here for at least half an hour. Stop, stop, stop. All these details are top secret and not to be shared with the outsiders, right? Good grief. I need to think of something. Daru, no. Itaru Hashida. <sighs> What's up? Bring that out. Bring what out? You. Oh, could you not know something like that? It's my perfect right arm. That is that. Future gadget number 099. It's the invention we made that could change the world. 
Yama? Have you already invented 99 gadgets? That's amazing. Uh, oh, Karin, can we cut a pizza with that? <laughs> Stop obsessing over your damn pizza. Uh, fine, fine. In any case, this is what you are looking for, right? Even though complaining, Daru still places the object that I'm looking on the table. It is a metallic object that kind of looks like a satellite. Well done, Super Haka! You understand more quickly than normal people do. In any case, this is the device our future gadgets lab is going to discuss. It is also the great invention that I am about to announce. Yama, is this what I think is Nya? Huh, huh, huh. Indeed it is. It's exactly what you thought. Nya, Nya. That's amazing, Kiyoma. I can't believe you even managed to break the disaster seal of the demon skin of the six heavens. Ah. Uh, isn't breaking seals a really bad thing? <laughs> but that's what happened, Nya. Yeah? In that case, I guess, Paris will just have to tell you the truth hidden for 700 years. Not good at this rate. Paris fantasies are going to uh, steal the show again. Hey, assistants, say something normal. Ah, uh, simply put, you built a miniature time machine, right? Eh? <laughs> I now declare the 132nd Future Gadgets Lab Roundtable Conference officially open. Ah, uh, please dispense with this unnecessary formalities. What? How can you say something so important is unnecessary? Next up, let us thoroughly examine this great invention. This formidable device, which can transcend observable dimensions and defy established conventions. Future gadgets number 099. It's just an experimental time machine developed from the principle of D mail. Da cocoon, da cocoon. Since it's a time machine, does that mean it can travel through time? Oh my god, this is going to turn out bad, isn't it? The next time we used a time machine in Steingate was was not the best experience, as I might say. Well, I would like to say that, but the truth is that just Otaku's name for it. After all. I don't know if it's really can't travel through time. My guess is that Ocarin just looked for an excuse to get everyone together. It's because this is such an earth shaking device that I called everyone together to witness this miraculous moment. What that? The male thing Durunya was talking about just now, Nya? Hmm, it's that email thing that you can send to the past, right? Why oh, she can still remember from when Hirisu Chan explained it before. Yep, that's right, Mayuri. Hehehe. <laughs> it. Did Kyoba Sensei really invent something so amazing? Well done, Kyomanya! But of course, after all, I am the mad scientist. Point Yama! Creating something that can turn the world on its head 
ist Child's Play for me. <laughs> uh, all right, then please explain the principle to us. Oh, great and mighty mad scientist. Uh, oh, um, uh, simply put, it uses black holes and then, and then it. And then what? Damn you, Christina. As my assistant, it's your job to explain these operating principles to the other lab members. Besides, right now, the emails and how to send them are more important to the lab. Uh, fine, fine. I just knew you couldn't hack it. Teresa takes a deep breath and then points to the modified microwave under the table. Simply put, demers are a way of sending mails to the past via the phone gate waves. Use the full name, it's phone wave name, subject to change. Yeah, whatever. When the phone wave runs backwards, it begins to uh, discharge electrical arcs. During this time, Mails can be uh, sent to the past. According to my calculations, one second of the microwave time corresponds to one hour in reality. In other words, if I want to send a email to a cover from five days ago, I would have to have the microwave run in reverse for 120 seconds. Well, that looks very linear. After verifying the destination time and the context of the mail you want to send, you will start up the microwave and waiting for it to start producing arcs before pressing the send button, which sends your mail to the past. However, the length of your this mails is limited of maximum of 32 half width characters or 80 full width characters. All other data will be lost. Oh, so you can't send mails to the past. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Indeed. However, my mad scientist ambition goes far beyond that. If we could go beyond sending mails to sending an entire person to another point in time, and that's why you invented this miniature time machine, right? Why do you keep stealing my lines? Um, indeed. This is the Future Gadgets number 099, version 1.96, based on the D-mail principles. Also known as Lawless Monitor. By the way, it's written as that in Japanese. What? Why did you all go quiet all of a sudden? I, I think that Perfect Observer or whatever is a great name. That's flawless monitor, damn it. Uh, in any case, the thing generates more fundamental particles than the phone wave, named subject to change. If my theory is right, I should be able to change the world. A very bold hypothesis. So, what were your experimental results? Uh, when will you learn that it's not the result that matters, but the process of obtaining them? In other words, all your prior experiments failed, right? <clears throat> so what if they did fail? Failure is the mother of success, after all. Also, my mad scientist's instincts are telling me that this activation is bound to succeed. Uh, fine, fine. It just as I thought. You have been way smarter than 
this if you actually succeed. I will prove that my theory is correct right now. I point to future gadgets number 099 on the table. Future gadgets number 099. No, I mean, flawless monitor. Throw you through hidden minds to me, the mad scientist. Click. It's expected. Nothing happened after I push the switch. Uh, this, this is just as I'm thinking about how I blame everyone on the organization and wrap things up. The future gadgets number 099 in my hand seems to understand what I'm saying and turns on. Dangerous electrical arcs begin sweeping from future gadgets number 099. Yeah? Is is that lighting? Yeah. What what's happening? Akabe, what did you do just now? I, I didn't do anything. Daru, did you install a voice activation controller into it? Of course not. You think we are rich enough for that? I'm pretty sure I didn't do anything else to it. But why did the Hidato Kuyas in Future Gadgets number 099 suddenly react so strongly? The ground beneath my feet suddenly starts shaking. The lab is... Is it that an earthquake? Oh no, my waifus! Everybody, run! I will cut the power! Just as I'm about to move, and... Intense electrical arc silently discharge in Mayuri and Kurisu direction. Screams? Mayuri, look out! Mayuri! Kurisu tries to grab Mayuri, but she is pinned down by electrical current. I practically run towards them, but I end up stepping on something and my foot slips. There's a mighty impact. Blinding white light fills my vision. That is where my memories stop. And with that, I think that's it. The end of part one of this collab event. I must say, it's very interesting here. I, 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 Kinda of starting to hate to break it, but now yeah, I need to recover my voice from all this mad scientist talk and so. And uh, yeah, in general, we will see in the part episode uh, two, or I'll rather to say part two, what's going on here. Um, and I have like six members of the lab. There's some stuff here behind and. Yeah, I think that's it for it. Uh, thank you for watching the part one. Thank you for listening. I wish you a great day, night, afternoon, and remember, L, die, Congo.